We're in conversation with Stefan Winkelmann, CEO of Lamborghini, who's come to India after 10 years. Stefan, welcome to India. Obviously, a lot's happened uh, in a decade. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, you know, just your uh, thoughts on how 2023 has been for Lamborghini worldwide and how 2024 is looking. When we speak about 2023, it was the best year ever in terms of uh, deliveries to customers, but also in terms of order intake. So um, we had for the first time exceeded the 10,000 cars delivered to, to customers with a good uh, uh, regional, uh, let's say, balance between uh, the Americas, Europe, and Asia Pacific region. And we're entering the, the year in a good shape because uh, we have almost two years of order bank, uh, globally speaking. And this is putting us into a very comfortable position. It's very difficult now to make a forecast on how the year is going to uh, proceed. But uh, in March, we will have then all the figures for the year 2023. So not only the states, but also turnover, ROS, and the operated profit. But do you think 2024 could be another record year, looking at the way the demand is? Because uh, uh, right now, I think demand for super sports cars is still very strong. But the demand is still going strong, but we are in the middle of February, so it's uh, difficult, very difficult to make a forecast. You know, the last years, um, against all odds, now the, the market was rising and rising, and therefore we are very cautious in making... Uh, a clear forecast for the year 2024 at time being. Right. And, you know, looking at India, again, India crossed a landmark 100 cars, just 1% of uh, to total sales. So, obviously, very, very small. Are you, are you happy with that figure? Of course, 100 is good. But clearly, India seems to be, uh, you know, not growing uh, as much as other markets. I mean, what's your outlook for India? I mean, what are the growth drivers uh, that could really kind of take that uh, number up uh, substantially? And, you know, the Indian car market is a big car market with 4 million cars sold last year or delivered to customers. Inside this market, uh, the high, luck, high end luxury super sports car market is very small. It's uh, around 1,000 cars. And inside this, 100 cars is a lot. So we have always to see it uh, into perspective. And uh, I think that with the new generations of uh, buyers coming up, we have a good perspective also of growth in the years to come. And, you know, uh, what we've also seen, prices are also rising dramatically, to be honest. I mean, uh, in India, what a revolto would cost over, uh, you know, uh, 10 crores for us, uh, which is uh, uh, a lot of money. Uh, how do you find customers, uh, you know, in terms of reacting to uh, price increases? Or is it that, uh, you know, there's a lot of elasticity as far as uh, demand goes, uh, uh, as cars even get more expensive? But every, so we have a stability in the taxation of the market, which is a good sign for us, uh, and at least in the last five years it, uh, it is, and it was like this. Um, we, are, we are living into an environment of uh, similar cars, similar brands. So there is no, let's say, free floating, but it's always a price positioning, and we are, let's say, comparable in terms of positioning uh, towards other brands, like in the markets all around the globe. And, you know, coming to your products, obviously, with the Revolto, you've gone uh, hybrid. Uh, big change from what the Aventador was, a complete change in character. Uh, just your sense, how have the customers reacted? Uh, do you think there is still a bit of a challenge by, though it's a hybrid, bringing some form of electrification? Uh, does it take away some of the purity from what the uh, traditional Lamborghinis were? Man, we always say we don't need to be the first ones in the market, but when we come or when we are ready to do so, and we want to be, then we have to be the best ones. The customer feedback is very positive. Uh, we sold uh, 36 months already of the Revuelto, so for the, uh, it's covered uh, for the next three years the production, which is a, an incredible sign. So the fact that uh, we are not only promising to reduce the CO2 emissions with this car, we're increasing the performance big time. This is, uh, let's say, a must for, uh, for a car like ours. We always say, that the next generation has to be within all the things also more performing than the previous one because we talk about design we talk about performance and performance is split in two it's about let's say the numbers now acceleration top speed lap time but also about the emotion a car is right. giving you and lamborghini is uh, big in this one 
So talking about emotion, uh, is that a challenge uh, as you know you move towards electrification and saying full EVs? Uh, to be honest, today the EVs you have on the market, whatever you say, they do lack the emotion. Uh, what do you think uh, you know needs to be done? Uh, because I mean, sound is not there. The linearity of the way it accelerates is very one-dimensional. Is this one of the big challenges you think uh, brands like you all face? It is a big challenge. We have to be very honest about that. But I also have to say that five or six years ago, about the hybridization of super sports cars, nobody was believing in it. Uh, we have to invest uh, uh, big time to get uh, a return on investment, and we have to do it very much in advance um, to the market outcome. And uh, therefore, we think that uh, also the full electrification is not something which we are planning from one day to the other. There's a, a roadmap, a clear roadmap, a clear strategy we have, which we call uh, Cortauri. So we will have one first car full electric by the end of this yes. decade, which will be an additional car. But uh, for the super sports cars, no? the Huracan and the Huracan Follow and the Revuelto, uh, we are also thinking to keep the hybridization alive as long as possible. We don't have to forget that the legislator is telling us on how to, or that we have to reduce uh, the emissions dramatically. And uh, there is no clear, uh, let's say, substitution to full electric cars if you have to go to zero. Right. But, you know, in that transition before you go to zero, uh, hybridization clearly is one way to save the ICE engine. Uh, you kept retain the V12 also with the Revulto. Uh, uh, I mean, do you think, so what you're saying is the internal combustion engine, you will try and prolong that as long as possible. I think there is, a, let's say, a low impact of Lamborghini in terms of CO2 right. emissions globally. Um, we are selling very few cars. The, the mileage is very reduced. But on the other hand, we have a social responsibility and we have to be in line uh, with the legislation. So we don't want to be uh, going out of the market only because we want to stay with one type of idea. But we have a flexibility which is going to last for some years at least from now on. So we can decide uh, in three, four years uh, from now what to do next with the super sports cars. And, you know, looking at the legislation, uh, obviously 2035, uh, you know, UK pushed it back by uh, five years. There seems to be, uh, you know, it's, it could change again because clearly uh, the transition is not as fast as uh, it is. Uh, there's still a lot of challenges. It's not practical. So in this kind of, uh, let's say, unpredictable or scenario where it's a lot of flux, how do brands like you all really, uh, you know, plan for something that, you know, could be, might even be pushed, uh, you know, later on? Yeah, what, what we always ask is, is a clear strategy from the legislator. Uh, harmonization globally is another thing because today we have 17 different rules around the world, uh, which are, uh, let's say, looking at CO2 emissions, but also uh, and NOx and other, uh, let's say, um, emissions types, which is making our life very complex. So clear rules, harmonization, and from our side, uh, we have to be very flexible. There, As I said, we will go ahead with uh, hybridization because also performance is key for our let's say, for our right. success story. Um, and an opportunity can be in the future, uh, the synthetic fuel. But it's something which we have to see in the years to come. It's very early, too early to talk about that because it has to be in, uh, in an uh, amount that uh, it's helping not only Lamborghini, but also other brands. But do you think synthetic fuels could save niche manufacturing in the sense, save them can let them continue to uh, go on with, with ICE. I mean, do you think there's a possibility of that? Because uh, clearly you can't do it on scale. That is uh, quite yeah, challenging. If you look worldwide, no? yeah. if we are today in the year 2035, and you have to imagine uh, that all the cars which are going to be sold have to have zero emissions, and but there will be a huge car park still with ICE engines. Right. So if you have, let's say, an alternative fuel to the one we have today, you can reduce drastically uh, the emissions. This could be an opportunity, but there must be a shift. Other than that, uh, you have to put, let's say, in the lake of fuel, I don't know, the, the synthetic fuel, and uh, be part of, uh, let's say, uh, a sustainability program, which I see very complex uh, with the view of today happening in 10 years from now. But the idea could be that we are doing with our test cars, 
We can use synthetic fuels in the future, or also for our racing activities, like the One Make Race right. Series Super Trofeo. But this is not enough, uh, let's say, to have a clear vision after 2035. So we, we have to maintain flexibility. We have to be alert. We have to see what technology can give us in the future. And um, the good thing is that we are starting now with hybridization. So all our cars will be brand new by the end of this year. So we have more time to decide. Right. And, you know, you, you had mentioned earlier that the only way to get to zero emission is with the full EV. So clearly that's one direction you will have to be at some time still further away. So, you know, just last question. I mean, uh, what how dif what will, let's say, differentiate a Lamborghini EV from other EVs? I know it's very early, but what are the factors that you think you would really uh, work on to make a difference? So it's on us to, to prove now the difference. And we have a roadmap from here to the first uh, um, electric vehicle because we want to prove that also an, a full electric vehicle can be very emotional in terms of driving experience. And one of the key elements is the handling behavior. So how the lightness, the light footness uh, is going to be experienced uh, while you're driving those cars. And this is on a lap, uh, on, a, on a circuit, so a lap time. Or it can be also in terms of uh, mountain roads, windy roads. So the software update, the software development here is key, and we have a lot of uh, positive news we will show from here to the first uh, electric car. You know, some manufacturers, even mainstream manufacturers, have given gearboxes with EVs. Do you think that's something you could look at just to bring uh, emotion uh, into the driving? Is that something you would, could consider? I, I'm against, uh, let's say, copying or faking uh, what is uh, in the cars today. Uh, we have to be innovative enough and convincing enough, but not by with words, but with facts, uh, that these cars uh, can compete and also can be better than the ICE cars. Right. And last question, uh, Stefan, you've come to India after 10 years. Uh, how has it changed for you? I mean, what, what, what's, what's the big difference uh, you've seen? I know a lot, many more cars. Uh, lots of luxury cars, uh, obviously your numbers are good. How, how, how do you see this market coming after a decade? Your well, Lamborghini experience. has improved a lot, but yeah. it's not about Lamborghini, it's also about understanding the market. I see the infrastructure has changed dramatically in the last decade. Uh, the car market is growing, there's much more competition also, we have to say. Um, I think uh, coming back to the luxury market, it's still a small market, but looking into the luxury uh, segment or but not only what the car is, is um, uh, looking ahead, it's also the, the, the brands with, uh, for watches, uh, accessories, fashion. Or luxury all, goods, yeah. They are all, let's say, in the starting blocks, ready that this market is opening up uh, big time. And I think that there is a, a good future for India in these terms. On that positive note, thank you very much and hope to see you again, not after 10 years. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much.